Hello, my name is Carlos Israel Villarreal, and this is my exhibition, The Fruits. I was uh, born in Kingsville, Texas, and I lived um, most of my early years back and forth between Kingsville and Corpus Christi. Uh, and when I was 18 and finished uh, high school, I moved uh, to New York City so that way I could study acting. Um, and uh, I was in New York City for a number of years, and I um, began working for Apple, and that's sort of what kept me there. And then I moved back um, about 10 years ago um, uh, to be back in my hometown and to be close to my family. So these days what I'm doing is I'm studying at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi to get my master's degree um, in fine art. And um, I also teach there as well. Um, I'm also one of the owners of Produce and we're a local creative company here in town. And we do a number of different creative projects. Um, everything from sound recording to video recording to um, uh, graphic design. Uh, well, I, I uh, came into art um, originally through theater, um, and uh, I was uh, bitten by the drama bug, and I moved to New York City. But then after a time, I sort of um, I, I, I began to fall in love with the other side of the camera, and so that's what drew me originally to. Um, the world of film and photography and uh, as I began to get more and more interested in photography I really took an interest to the world of fine art photography. Well, uh, whenever I was really really young um, I learned how to use a camera when I was uh, pretty pretty young, a video camera, and I would actually make these like small little um, films. Um, I started when I was like maybe nine years old and I would uh, had an old VHS recorder and I would make these like funny little movies of myself imitating these different um, civic uh, people, everyone from like Martin Luther King to like John F. Kennedy. And I would make these sort of like these like little home movies where I was playing these, uh, these famous politicians. <clears throat> what initially drew me to, uh, uh, to the other side of the camera was, um, at first it was necessity. Um, being an actor is very, very difficult, and so when I was in New York, I wanted to try and take whatever job I could get on a set. Um, that led me to um, a PA uh, job. And um, I started off as a, a PA, you know, just running errands, uh, getting coffee, blocking traffic. And I sort of uh, worked my way up um, into the camera team. And one of the things that I noticed was that uh, on a film set, everybody who's uh, pretty well adjusted are the crew, and it's the actors that are kind of uh, always going a little bit crazy and, and frenzied. And it made me sort of realize that um, I uh, didn't want to be so crazy and frenzied all the time, that I wanted to be a little more uh, relaxed and enjoy what I was doing. And so I've titled uh, the show The Fruits. Um, as a kind of uh, homage to several different things. One is the, um, the idea of uh, uh, how uh, children are the fruit of our labor and they're the fruit of what we do. And that's, that's sort of one part of the story. I've obviously chosen to shoot um, uh, pictures of my family and to stage them um, as such. But uh, I've chosen fruit because um, essentially like I believe it's a metaphor for life. We constantly are trying to water um, uh, our children and to make them grow the way that we want them to, and they don't always uh, turn out the way that we, we expect, but we usually always get something really, really good uh, from them. And, um, but there's also a, a kind of a calling to um, what it means to be a, a Mexican American. And uh, my father um, worked uh, in, in the fields when he was you know, my age, when he was or much younger than me. Um, and he, he, uh, he picked watermelon and he picked um, strawberries. And uh, so it's, it's also calling on that, uh, that lineage in my life and that part of my life as well. Yeah. Um, so all of the work uh, is, uh, has the same title. It's all called The Fruits. Uh, the only difference in the title is the actual fruit that is inside of, uh, that's pictured. Um, and each of them has a different type of fruit. 
Um, we start here with the uh, watermelon. Um, and this piece, uh, I'm, I'm very, very interested in this idea of like um, the world uh, both inside and outside and seeing uh, this, this depth um, in, in, in the frame and seeing deep into what we're, uh, what we're looking at and into the world that, that, I've, that I've created here. Um, and so that was sort of my, uh, my first thought. And, and I like to start with this one because this is the first photograph that I took in the series. Um, and uh, I think it's the one that really uh, solidified what the idea should be in, in, in my mind. Um, and, it, and it really like let me know, okay, what you're doing is good. Keep exploring uh, this subject matter. And then uh, uh, we've got uh, this one. Um, which is the second uh, photograph that I shot in the series, and this is called uh, Strawberries. And um, I did a number of different um, poses and arrangements with my son and my mother, and this is one that's almost a happy accident. Um, she just sort of happened to align perfectly with him, and uh, they sort of meld together. They're both wearing the yellow, and so at first it's almost like an illusion. You're not really quite sure what it is that you're looking at, but once you look deeper into the image, uh, you discover that she's actually watering uh, the fruit here. Um, she's not really watering the fruit. We know that she's outside. Once again, I'm calling upon the same idea of the inside and the outside, um, the outside world invading the inside world, um, and then the melding of the two worlds together. Uh, it's one of the, 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 the things about the work that I like to create. Um, it's meant to live uh, a big. Um, these are all these pieces are roughly you know 34 by 45 or so, um, and they're meant to live big. And as an artist, when you make something big, uh, you are calling upon these historical, um, these very very famous historical paintings, and that's the world that I want them, uh, that these characters to live in, and I want to place them within that uh, historical context, uh, to, st to that they should be in a sense revered. Um, this Mexican family, and that they should be placed on the same level as a Napoleon, as a George Washington, as um, any of the other historic characters, uh, you know, in the United States. This is a new part of the United States. It's a new, um, not necessarily totally new, but it's a new, it's, a, it's an emerging, right, uh, minority within the United States. And so I'm trying to sort of place them within that larger historical context. A lot of my work, I, I, will, I would certainly say that it's very, very political. It's, it's, it's political in the sense that it's calling upon these political themes that are currently um, being discussed in American society, whether that's issues of, of what it means to be a, you know, sort of upper middle class Latino family, right? And we only get, in, in, in certain media, we only really get like one representation of what it means to be Latino. And there's many, um, there's many forms of, of, of being a Latino, and there's different, uh, there's different classes, obviously, within, within the Latino community. Um, and this is just another part of that. It's, it's, it's me trying to um, subvert people's understanding of what it means to, to be Latino in the context of today's America. So I've... Uh, I've chosen my um, family as a, uh, as subjects within this world that I'm that I'm always trying to sort of create. Um, I work with a number of, of different uh, models, and I have a number of different sort of themes that I'm that I'm always um, investigating. But with this specific series, what I'm trying to do is to is to almost uh, understand my own family and understand the relationship that uh, is formed between um, a, 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 a grandson and his grandmother, right? And but then I also want people to ask deeper questions about family and and um, the lack thereof of other figures, right? Um, I, I believe that in a sense we live uh, in a very Latinos live. A, almost in a very matriarchal society, um, and, and, and mothers are very, very important 
right? And they, they never stop being a mother. Um, even you know, with, even when they become a grandmother, right? There's there's still there's there's still that connection, and it's just formed again. And that was something that I found interesting, and that I really really wanted to explore. <clears throat> I'm also interested in uh, showing uh, color and investigating color as um, one an important part of Latino culture. Um, we are very colorful people. Um, but not only, but, but exploring color also as um, uh, an invasion of, of, of white, of, of white and whiteness and almost of white privilege in a sense. Um, and understanding how color uh, in work um, is essentially a, an attack on, on, on the purity of, of whiteness. We've been taught um, subtly uh, that, that uh, things that are white are pure and angelic and um, uh, perfect and beautiful and unsullied. Um, and the reality is, is that that's not necessarily true. And um, uh, white is uh, it many times uh, lacking, right? It's, it's emptiness, it's, 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 a, it's a void. Um, just, to, j just speaking of it as, as you know, as, as a color, and so I try and um, understand that that uh, color is uh, when you're thinking about white, color is always a uh, it's it's a challenge, it, it, it's a, it's a confrontation, right? That's 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 happening within the image. Um, white is is always trying to sort of dominate our eyes and dominate what we're seeing. Um, and so I try and uh, invade that, that space, invade that whiteness with a sense of color, with a sense of brightness, um, and with a sense of saturation. Uh, I think that that's, that's very, very important for subverting uh, people's understanding of what it is that's beautiful and what we find beautiful as a society. Okay. So my process is actually, um, I start off very, very technical. Um, I often go into the space with the camera and I just begin with the space and the lights uh, before I even bring in the subjects. And I try and really, really understand, okay, what is the light doing? Um, a lot of these are sort of difficult lighting uh, setups or more difficult lighting setups. And so they require a little bit of time and a little bit of patience and a little bit of like, I have to sort of go and shoot one day and then look at the pictures and then and then sort of see how everything is looking, and then maybe the next day, uh, you know, I, at, the, at the right time of day, I bring in the actors, so to speak, my family. And I found that working with my family, it's, uh, you know, they, 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 my mother is, is, is very much a performer, and so I'm always trying to get her to stop performing and to just almost like be real. And so I often find that a lot of these, uh, a lot of these shots are either very, very early in whenever we're shooting, or it's sort of like later, from uh, whenever everyone's sort of tired and everything just kind of settles into place. And so I'm, I'm also too. I try to uh, uh, allow. I try and set the space, set the frame, and then allow the actors to exist in it and um, see what magic uh, comes from it. Um, I don't like to give too, too much direction, um, uh, except, you know, just in terms of basic blocking, where people should be, where things should be. Uh, other than that, I like to sort of let them figure it out, and um, I'm pretty happy with the results. One of the things that inspires me to make art is the journey that I go on uh, as an individual to get to um, a point where the work is you know, so to speak, finished. I mean, work is never really finished, but uh, we can always improve it. But uh, I love starting on something and coming up with that idea and then slowly planning it out and then watching it actually come to fruition. And to have it, um, I work very, very much conceptually, so I'm not, uh, I don't really take one-off pictures. I'm trying to like 
look at a subject from many different angles and through many different lenses and through many different um, uh, many different frames and so that's that's part of the fun for me is is that that journey to getting to where I can actually begin to make the pictures to print the pictures you know and then to uh, finally get them to a point where they're up on a wall and you know people other people can come and see them and enjoy them in terms of the artist uh, that I am uh, very very inspired by um, obviously the photographers uh, Jeff Wall um, uh, has an enormous uh, uh, influence on my work um, as well as Gregory Crutzen um, I would say that I work very much in their tradition the tradition of tableau uh, photography um, where everything is staged um, I'm not really interested in a lot of other kinds of uh, photography at the moment um, I'm very very much interested in, in creating worlds and using these uh, using the tools of cinema almost to create pictures that are almost this like miniature movie and so uh, in terms of photographers those are the two that I would definitely say that I am uh, very influenced by and then in terms of uh, other artists other mediums um, uh, with painters I'm very influenced by the the uh, Los Angeles school so um, uh, Eric Fischel and Julian Sch Julian Schnabel uh, very very important to me uh, especially Eric Fischel um, uh, and uh, in terms of the world of sculpting I'm really into uh, Daniel Arsham um, he's a uh, he's a pretty fantastic artist um, and then uh, uh, Yinka Shonovar are probably uh, two of my favorite sculptors working at the moment and so I'm, I'm constantly drawing um, inspiration from wherever I can get it um, those are some of my favorite artists working today. Ah, how do you know when you're finished with the piece? This is a very, very uh, complex question, I think, for many artists. And I think many artists would tell you that we're never really done. I think if I looked at these pictures right now, there's multiple things that I would want to go back and fix, uh, that I would want to go back and change. But I think that that's, that that's a good thing as well, because as artists, we're constantly looking for uh, perfection and constantly striving uh, to make things as good as they can possibly be. I have a very conflicted, uh, um, I have a very conflicted uh, relationship with the term artist, um, only because I feel like it's 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 a term that gets used a lot for like a lot of different things in uh, today's society. Um, it's almost like the, the word genius, you know, we throw that around, we throw around the word artist. And um, I don't want to make it seem like not everyone is an artist because there's some people that do some amazing things. Um, but I feel as if I'm earning that every single day. And um, it's not enough to just call myself that. I have to really be that and I have, and, and I have to constantly um, Constantly make sure that I'm living up to what it means to be an artist. I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh,